go along with this, cooperate with this. We'll be as nice as we can to you within the limits of keeping you prisoner. Hey guys, how's it going, dude? Here I am back with another video, and today we are looking into one of the most disturbing cases I've probably looked at, and the main reason for that other than the abhorrent crimes that took place is the fact that there are videotapes that will be shown today of some of the victims in captivity. This is the Leonard Lake tapes case. Before I begin, I just want to say, can you please smash that like button if you enjoyed this kind of content because it tells YouTube that you're enjoying it and that basically helps me with the algorithm. So you can smash the like button, really help me out. If we get this video to a thousand likes, that would be phenomenal as well as hitting that subscribe button and maybe that notification bell. Thank you so much. Okay, buckle up. It's time for the Leonard Lake tapes. What I want is an off-the-shelf sex partner. I want to be able to use a woman whenever and however I want. And when I'm tired or bored or not interested, I simply want to put her away, lock her up in a little room, get her out of my sight, out of my life. A slave, there's no way around it. Primarily a sexual slave, but nonetheless a physical slave as well. This is a story of rape, murder, kidnap, and slavery by two very depraved men and a woman who will most certainly come into question towards the end of this video. But we may as well begin at the beginning of Leonard Lake's life. Now, Lake was born in San Francisco, California. When he turned six years old, his parents split up, leaving him and his sisters and brother to move in with their grandmother. Now, apparently, Lake was a very intelligent child, but also an incredibly disturbed one. From a very young age, he showed signs of where his life would eventually lead. Now, of course, with serial killers and stuff, they say, you know, they tend to abuse animals as a young child. Well, Leonard Lake used to dissolve live rats in containers containing acid, a method of disposing of bodies that he would use later in life. But one early sign of how disturbed this individual was, which is unlike many serial killers, he would sexually assault and take nude pictures of his sisters. Not only that, apparently in return for protection from their older brother Donald, he would force the girls to sexually please him, his own sisters. Now you would think, well, oh my goodness, if the grandmother ever found out about this, surely, you know, Leonard would be thrown out and, and, and maybe even taken to the police. Well, fortunately, the grandmother did find out about this. Unfortunately, she was clearly disturbed in her own way because not only did she turn a blind eye to this activity, she actually apparently encouraged it, which kind of facilitated and reinforced Leonard Lake's behavior as a young child. Into Leonard's late teens, he joined the army and did two tours of Vietnam. Now, it was on these tours that he was diagnosed with a condition called schizoid personality disorder. Now, apparently, schizoid personality disorder tends to be where an individual wants to be left alone. They live a sheltered life. They don't seek out social interaction, generally just want a solitary lifestyle. Now other traits of this condition is emotional coldness, detachment and apathy. Often individuals with schizoid personality disorder are unable to create relationships, meaningful long relationships with people. Whilst often having this internal fantasy world in which they habitat, which is something that Leonard Lake did but then 
try to make into a reality on the outside. It's very important to note that schizoid personality disorder very, very, very rarely leads to violence. And of course, there are stigmas around these kind of conditions such as schizophrenia, where the Hollywood movies have sensationalized them to, you know, oh, schizophrenic, you must be like a psycho murderer. This is not the case. I think that's worth reiterating. Now, this condition is important to note because it led to Lake being discharged from the army. From here, he went on to settle in San Jose, where he joined the university, but actually left after just one semester and got embroiled in the hippie lifestyle that was so prevalent at that time. He joined a commune and he was married in 1975, although this did not last because his wife found out that he was partaking in amateur pornography. Apparently these pornographic movies had a very sadomasochistic and bondage side to them. For nearly a decade from there, Lake was living at Greenfield Ranch, which is a massive 5,600 acre ranch where he met his second wife, Claralyn Balaz, I think is how you pronounce her name. She was often referred to as Cricket. Now, Cricket seemed to be heavily involved in what would later transpire in this case, but did not go to prison for it. Now, Lake put an ad in a War Gamer magazine, which was read and responded to by a former Marine, Charles Eng, I think is how you pronounce his surname. This was in 1981. Now, Charles was serving a prison sentence at the time, but was released in 1984. And when he was released, he met up with Leonard Lake as Leonard invited him to come live with him in his ranch. Now, by 1984 he had actually divorced Cricket but apparently stayed on very good terms and it was in fact from what I can tell Cricket or her family that was renting the property to Leonard. Now the two became a force of horror and destruction but before we get into that I just want to quickly go over Charles's history. Charles was born in British Hong Kong to incredibly wealthy parents, but his father was apparently very strict and incredibly abusive. And this led Charles to grow up to be a bit of a loner and socially inept. He was expelled from many schools that he attended and by all accounts was essentially the black sheep of the family and seen as a massive family disappointment. Charles showed many signs of kleptomania, which is where you just steal and steal and steal and steal. Something that would actually eventually lead to this whole case being blown wide open. Now via a visa, he moved to the United States in 1978 to study biology at a university in California. He, much like Leonard, dropped out after one semester and after that was involved in a hit and run incident and in order to get away with serving a prison sentence for that, joined the Marine Corps. Now, Charles had a very interesting career within the Marine Corps, which was actually founded on false birth certificates, which got him into trouble, as well as stealing automatic weapons, having possession of explosives and other firearms, which could have led to serious prison time. But due to plea deals, etc., he was dishonorably discharged and only served around 18 months in prison. After his release, he went and lived with Leonard in Wilseyville Cabin. Now, Leonard Lake had constructed a building next to the cabin known as the dungeon. And this is where the murders, the rape and kidnapping took place. Now, before Charles joined Leonard, it is believed that Leonard had murdered his brother Donald, as well as a few other people before Charles began assisting in Leonard's fantasies. They would kidnap, capture, lure families to this location, killing the children and the men immediately and keeping the women for torture, rape, and general kind of jobs around the house and things like cleaning, cooking, and things like that. While you're here, we'll keep you busy. You'll wash for us, you'll clean for us, cook for us, you'll they kidnapped their neighbor, Lonnie Bond, his girlfriend, Brenda O'Connor, and their son, Lonnie Jr. Lonnie Jr. was just a baby, 
At the time, Leonard and Charles murdered both the father and the son soon after kidnapping, but didn't actually reveal to the mother what had happened to them and actually taunted her by saying that they had fat. Well, do you know what? Here's the clip. Your baby is going to take, be taken away. Excuse me, uh, I'm going to be taken away. There's a family down in Fresno that doesn't have a baby. You're not taking my baby. Better than the baby's dead, right? I think they got one now. That's my baby. Brenda, you have a Her baby is sound asleep, like a rock. Uh, you're a we don't like you. Would that like me to put it in writing? They did the same to Harvey and Deborah Dubs as well as their young son, Sean. Again, murdering the child, murdering the father, and torturing, raping the mother. Other victims of Charles and Leonard were actually the families and friends who came seeking their loved ones who were missing. Now, interestingly, how it all fell apart was, as I said earlier, Charles was a kleptomaniac, which meant he had to steal and he was at a local hardware shop where he was stealing a vice presumably to torture the women with and he was caught and fled the scene. Now Leonard went back later that day to go and purchase the vice where police were waiting but they realized that this wasn't the description of the man that they had before but went on to search him, took his ID that he presented to the police and realized that this wasn't his ID, this was the ID of a man who had gone missing months prior. This meant that they had evidence to search this man's car and what they found in the boot was a silenced pistol. Now the silencer was most certainly illegal. So they took him in and Leonard Lake, just like the coward that this man is, took a cyanide pill whilst in custody of the police that he had sewn inside his clothing and he died, hopefully in agonizing pain for days later. Now the car that they seized from him was registered to a missing man. However, the license plates were registered to Leonard Lake. So from here, they found the address and from the address, they found the dungeon. Charles fled and was actually driven to the airport by cricket and Charles disappeared. At the home, of course, they found the dungeon, they found the depravity that was done by Charles and by Leonard, they found evidence of remains and documentation and a treasure map that led to massive like drums buried on the grounds which had lots more documentation and evidence of bodies etc which led the police to believe that there were around 25 victims. Now of course they also found journals by Leonard and the infamous videotapes. Now the wife, Lake's wife or divorced wife, naturally got a lot of death threats and things because she was seen to essentially be a third party in all this. She also is seen on the tapes, one of which she essentially, well, one of which she actually confirmed herself to be a paedophile by saying that she'd like to do things to boys that are 14 years old. I've seen some awfully cute looking little 14, 16 year olds that I am beat, so I wouldn't mind watching them do something interesting. A paedophile, but what she did was she stopped talking to the police, she stopped helping them until they granted her immunity. So they did that, and so she never saw the inside of a jail cell. She is still out there to this day. She's around 60 years of age, apparently living in California, which considering Leonard Lake committed suicide, which in itself is a massive shame that he never served the time that he deserved. She never went to jail, and Charles Eng went to jail. Finally got sentenced to death by 1999 after being on the run for so long, but eventually being arrested for assaulting a security guard at a shopping center, when again he was trying to steal, doing four years for that crime, and then finally being extradited to California after that four year prison sentence, 
and then finally going on trial for the Leonard Lake tapes case in 1999, being found guilty of 11 counts of first degree murder and being sentenced to death. However, due to laws etc being shifted around and changed in California, there has not been a death sentence executed since 2006. So still to this day, Charles Eng is actually on death row awaiting his execution. So Leonard Lake committed suicide after being in police custody for shoplifting. The wife got away with it completely and Charles Eng is still yet to be put to death for his crimes. But this has been the Leonard Lake and Charles Eng tapes case what do you guys think? I would love to know. Please do let me know down below. Hit the like button, share the video, subscribe. Have a look at the links down below. I have clothing, etc. Thank you so much. I really do appreciate it. I will see you very soon. Sweet one. Geese. Don't go along with this. I'll we'll probably take you in the bed, tie you down, rape you, shoot you, and bury you. Sorry, lady. Time's up. Make your choice.